Hey there, boys and girls. Welcome back to the shop. It's another kind of dreary afternoon outside. Can't go too far from the house because I'm on call for work. Um, but just out here in the shop messing around and thought I'd do another uh, review of some more tools that I bought to keep myself busy this summer. These are the Lumberjack Tools brand uh, Forstner bits and tenon cutters. Um, they're for making log furniture. Um, I suppose if you're here watching this video, you probably already know that. Um, I guess let's jump right in and take a look at them. I do have some use on these already. Um, I don't know if I probably didn't film a whole lot of that project, but um, I'll at least take a video here of the end process. I think I took some pictures along the way, or the, the end result, I should say, not the end process. But um, So I bought these off Amazon. I think all said and done, it was right around $200. And then I picked up a drill from Harbor Freight for an extra 50 bucks. So $250, and you know you can make, make your log furniture. Um, which to me is uh, quite the deal considering what mo most of that costs um, if you go and try and buy it yourself. Um, so this is the, I believe, the commercial grade. Um, there's three different grades uh, that they make. There's like the beginner or the homeowner or something like that, uh, the commercial and the industrial. Um, from what I've heard, the industrial, obviously it's, you know, it's the most expensive and from what I've heard because of that, Obviously, you're getting the, the highest quality tool and it produces the best results. But overall, again, for, for the price, I think I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with the results that I get from these. I do have some gripes and honestly, it could just be a uh, user error. But um, yeah, so we'll, we'll jump right into it here. Um, you can buy these separately. You don't have to buy them all as a, uh, as a kit. Um, but I thought I would go ahead and buy the one inch and two inch kit. So obviously, um, here's the, the one inch Forstner bit. Um, the one inch tenon cutter, yeah, the two inch Forstner bit, and the two inch tenon cutter. Um, they come with two sets, I should say one set of blades uh, per tenon cutter, and then some shims. Um, and they describe in the manual here how to use the shims um, and the setup and, and, and all that. Uh, and it does, it does, it does work like a giant pencil sharpener. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty basic tools. You do need a high torque drill to run them. Um, I didn't buy the exact drill that they that they recommend to use them. Um, they recommend like a single single speed high torque drill. Um, and I mean, I couldn't really find one of those around here. And if I did, I probably wouldn't be willing to pay the price. So um, I just bought. I'll, I'll grab it here and show it to you. It's like one of the drills from Harbor Freight. And I think at the time, like I said, this was like fifty dollars. Uh, they just call it like a mixing drill or something like that, but it is a variable speed drill. Um, and it's not, not the greatest thing, you know, for the application, but it does work. So this here is probably the most important part in uh, setting up the tools because they don't come assembled. Um, you do have to attach the blades and the shims to the tenon cutters yourself. Um, but they do a good job in the manual of describing, um, you know, the correct way to set them up. And you can see here, they tell you if you're cutting a smaller tenon, you want about an eighth inch gap there between the blade and the edge of the cutter, and a quarter inch if you're cutting a larger tenon. And this here is just describing, you know, if you were to angle uh, the blade, that's obviously not going to work too well, so they tell you not to do that. Um, so that's another important thing, you want to make sure that you have a consistent spacing all the way along the length of the blade. Um, and you do want to have both blades with the same spacing. Um, that's going to help you cut uh, an, an even tenon. Uh, but other than that, it's really not not a difficult setup process. Um, you know, something I think I had it together in like 10 minutes. Super easy, super simple. Um, I did get away with just using um, this little old bench vise right there uh, for cutting everything. They do make specific uh, like log vices for doing stuff like this, but I regular regular old bench vice works just fine if you ask me. It is a pretty messy process. It's a lot of uh, a lot of sweeping involved. I went out and got myself a nice you know, metal garbage can for all of the shavings, and you know I filled this thing up. 
I think one and a half times um, from uh, making the log day bed, whatever you want to call it, that I made. Um, I suppose I'll throw in a picture of that here. And I had that, as you can see from those pictures, assembled in my house um, with the mattress on it and everything. And I got it in there and I had to immediately take it back out because as soon as I got it in there, um, a bunch of wood wasps started coming out of it. Um, so that's one thing that, you know, I've made log furniture before. Uh, before I had these tools, I made it by hand. And it wasn't something that I really ever had to worry about. Um, every Everything that I was using was dry and had been dry for years. Um, but these logs that I used for that project were, um, well, they were cut a year ago and had been sitting in a pile out at my property for about a year uh, with the bark still on. So they were still, um, you know, inhabited by the beetles and whatnot, which is what I wanted because I wanted to, to, to get the uh, the character from, from the beetle damage and whatnot. Um, but then, you know, that's something you have to think about um, is waiting to use it until it's dry enough. And I mean, most people say after it's been debarked, um, you want to wait about a year, uh, sometimes even longer before you start using it, but I just don't have that kind of patience. Um, and you can see it kind of bit me in the ass there, but, um, you know, and that's the other thing too, even though they're called wood wasps, they're not really damaging, they don't sting or anything like that, they just look pretty menacing. Um, but the other thing that you do have to worry about are the actual beetles. Um, in this case, they're the uh, white pine beetles or the pine sawyer beetles however you want to say it. Uh, I think there's a, a couple, you know, there's, there's a whole uh, wood boring species uh, of, of all different varieties of beetles and whatnot. And the, the one thing that um, you probably don't have to worry about it too much, but to me it was a little bit concerning because I just didn't want to deal with it is if, uh, um, you know, he brought that furniture into the house and the beetles came out and, you know, for whatever reason infested the framing of your house or something like that, or, you know, it's not probable not a very likely thing, but it could happen. Um, so I decided to disassemble uh, the bed and just take it back outside. And I'll probably, you know, just watch and wait for a while. Um, like I said, the only thing that was coming out of uh, the the wood was was the wood wasps, and those aren't really a threat to to anything at all. It's just, you know, it's just a bug that's in your house. But um, the pine beetles, you can tell. Uh, that they're still in the logs and active because as they're in there doing their thing um, they will you know, create like a fine sawdust and it will actually fall out of the logs and land in piles on your floor um, so that's kind of what i'm watching and waiting for right now is just checking those logs every week to see if there's um any sawdust that's falling falling out of them and, and the one it looked like there was still still some uh some piles by it this morning when i checked it but um Anyway, off on a tangent, but um, if you're here learning about, you know, mortise and tendon tools, then uh, that's, you know, something that you should think about. So let's take a look at one of the logs that I cut real quick. So this here was one of the uh, cross members for the bed. I had to remake this one because as I was assembling it, I managed to break it. Uh, no surprise there, but you can see this is a one inch tenon and let me try and get you a little bit more focused here there you can kind of see it now the finish that the cutter leaves on here is not fantastic it's pretty rough um, and you know on the tenon itself that's fine because if you're gluing the wood together um, in my opinion that gives you know it's more surface area for the glue to grab onto uh, a rougher finish over a smooth finish not that a smooth finish won't work um, but on the angle leading up to the tenon um, you know that's a visible part and you, you want that to be smooth so, i mean obviously you're going to be sanding the entire thing um, before you put it together at least i would i mean i don't know what you're going to be doing that's up to you um, but i think now, there's a number of ways to correct that and it's by messing around with the spacing that I showed you earlier between the blade and the body of the cutter that will give you a smoother cut same with uh, maintaining the same spacing on both blades um, 
And then the other thing is when, as I said earlier too, the when I started working with this wood, it was extremely wet. Um, and I've noticed that uh, cutting tenons on drier pieces of wood, um, it's not as, you don't get this, I don't know what you would call it, this rough finish, I guess. And this wood is also kind of punky, so that doesn't help. Um, and this is white pine. And I did, um, I don't know if anybody would have watched the video where I'm putting together uh, that um, stump table uh, with the slab top and I had to make that sort of prosthetic little leg for it. Uh, that was made out of cedar and that was much, much smoother. Uh, that was just regular old uh, like eastern white cedar and the finish came out on that like, I mean, it's like you had, had gone at it with like 220 sandpaper already. It was extremely smooth. So you'll probably have some variation uh, in the finish depending on the type of wood you use, how dry it is or how wet it is. And then again, the spacing um, on the blades and the tenon cutter themselves. So um, just a couple things to think about. But, uh, you know, like I said, I went through and had to sand everything anyway. Um, so I just sanded all the, the angles leading up to the tenons. And in my opinion, it looks just fine. You can draw your own conclusions, but really that kind of about covers it. So they also uh, recommend that when you're storing these, uh, you clean them and oil them. And again, my patients got the best of me the other day when I was out here cleaning. Uh, didn't really clean all the wood chips out of them too well, uh, but I did oil the blades and the uh, tenon cutters as well as the Forstner bits before throwing them into the toolbox. Um, but I will definitely be using these more in the future. Uh, as you can see from those pictures, in my opinion, that bed turned out freaking awesome. Um, I stole that design off of, I don't know, I think it was like wish.com or something like that. One of those weird sites where if you just Google like um, like log day bed or something like that, you'll probably end up finding the design that I, that I used. Um, I just you know took the picture and made my own dimensions and whatnot. I uh, just made it to fit that twin mattress. I'm going to throw some probably, you know, buffalo plaid sheets on there and um, just line the back and sides with uh, throw pillows and that's going to be the quote-unquote couch for my office. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's that. Uh, it's a good quick look at the tools there. Um, as always, any questions, uh, just drop a comment down there and uh, let me know if you would like to see these things in action. Uh, I didn't really film the making of the bed because it's very repetitive um, and I just didn't think it would be super interesting, but I would be more than happy to at least go over um, how I laid everything out um, and then I could even you know put everything together and, and show you how I drilled the holes and and whatnot but um, it's pretty self-explanatory I would think most people can probably just figure that out on their own um, but if you would like to see uh, any more log furniture made in the future yeah just uh, leave me a comment and I will definitely work that into uh, the videos on my channel so again thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one Thank you.